If you look for information on the internet how antiviruses work, it looks very grim. You see statements like antivirus rely mostly on pattern signatures to detect malware, or behavior-based detections are heuristic detections, and pattern-based detections are not. AI is a new and better way to detect malware. Detection techniques should focus on high detection rates. If you think that any of these are true, you might want to watch this video. So before we have any misunderstandings, I should probably distinguish the terms signature and pattern from each other. So when I say signature, what I mean is an independent unit of detection logic. It does not have to depend on patterns at all. So it can be a unit of detection logic that's based on API callbacks or that's based on certain behavior or it's some other algorithmic based detection. Like um, algorithmic based detections are the ones you see, for instance, in Detected Easy, where you have a whole algorithm describing the detection logic. Um, so all of these are signatures and signatures are simply units of detection which are shipped separately to the antivirus product in contrast to product updates where you have hard-coded uh, things that are changed where the, where the whole program is changed of the antivirus product. Um, so signature updates happen every hour, every two hours, so several times a day usually. And that's why they are separately from the product updates. You want to be as fast as possible about these signature updates, basically. Now, if you have patterns, you can use them for signatures, or you may not use them. Even if you use Yara, you may not use patterns at all in the Java role. You can base everything you do with Yara on some file characteristics, for instance. A pattern is sometimes also referred to as a string. For instance, in Yara, it's called string. Peter Zor calls it string. And all that a pattern is, is a sequence of bytes, which is checked for in a file. So if you scan for a pattern, you determine whether or not this pattern is present in the file or in a specific location of that file. First, let's start with a very common antivirus myth and some ideas how this myth was probably born. And that is antivirus programs rely mostly on pattern signatures to detect malware. There are probably two reasons for that. And the first reason is the marketing of the antivirus companies themselves, specifically the new vendors, but the old ones probably too. So. When you create a new security product, you want to make sure that your product is better than the others. And you want to make sure to tell potential customers that you're different and that you're better. So one of the things that they do to achieve this in marketing is they claim that traditional antivirus techniques do not work because they rely mostly on pattern signatures. This isn't true. But it's their way of saying, hey, we are better because we use other techniques than that. And then they proceed to show techniques that have already been in use for the last two decades. And this is specifically interesting when you look, for instance, at AI development. If you look at, for instance, this book here, Peter Zor, Virus Research and Defense, this is 20 years old, and it already describes a defense technique that's based on neural networks. So already 20 years ago, neural networks were used to defend from malware. And this book is, um, the title is Virus Research and Defense because it's so old. Uh, back then, malware mostly consisted of the malware type virus. So that's how old this book is. And they also describe pattern matching, but they also describe numerous other techniques and defenses against viruses at the time. Some examples are emulation, emulation combined with tracing, behavior blocking, uh, in-memory scanning, neural networks, as already mentioned. Um, there's a technique 
they call skeleton scanning that was at the time used for macroviruses, where they say, the book says that um, Eugene Kaspersky invented this, and what he describes is that um, they strip the meat from the bone in uh, figuratively by stripping instructions that are not essential and by stripping not essential white space from the macrovirus code. So that you are left with a virus body where only the essential instructions are uh, still in place and then you apply um, other techniques to detect malware like pattern scanning. Um, so there are lots of lots of techniques described here, also certain dynamic um, and heuristic techniques like using um, features of the PE file that might be a little bit weird, uh, especially when they are infected by viruses. So the section characteristics might have certain features. There might be gaps between sections and things like that that are taken into account for creating heuristic signatures. So all of that has been used 20 years ago and it's not new at all. So most of the marketing claims that I see where they say this is our new technique, it has been around for decades. A second reason why I believe that probably people think that pattern signatures are mostly used by traditional antiviruses and that they are not able to detect new malware is a misunderstanding how virus total works. Virus total is so prevalent, uh, so many people use it to see if uh, malware is detected or not, and to see, for instance, um, malware developers may also check virus total to determine if their product is FUD, so fully undetected. Um, so they believe that this the results on virus total are an accurate description of how the product would react, and they are not. There's a good reason for that, and that is virus total only uses a very stripped functionality. They use a um, command line scanner, and this command line scanner does not have a lot of the detection mechanisms that the full product has. For instance, it may not have behavior blocking, no in-memory scanning, it may not have AI, may or may not, depending where it's placed, if it's in the scanner or somewhere else. Um, it does not have any internet access, no access to backend information about these files to the cloud. Um, so a lot of these technologies that are specifically used to detect new malware might be missing. And that will contribute to the idea, oh, I just XORB my file and now it is FAD, um, that the antivirus scanners are wholly incapable of detecting new malware, whereas this is not true. So how do antivirus products actually work? In 2015, I wrote a scanner based on anomalies in the PE file format. So I did, attempted to detect every PE malware based on anomalies in the PE metadata. And while it was quite easy to get a high detection rate, the detection rate plummeted to a very low level as soon as I set it to zero false positives. And this is also what happens with other detection approaches like AI, for instance, or any kind of heuristic detections, if you want zero false positives, this is not going to yield good results anymore. And this is the inherent problem when you have an actual antivirus product because false positives weigh more heavily than any single malware that you miss. Now, you may think, but a low false positive rate should be acceptable, right? Well, you always have a low false positive rate. It's not avoidable entirely. There is even mathematical proof that you can't avoid that. However, when testing, you should still assume or test for a zero false positive rate because the higher this rate is, the more maintenance work you have to do in the future. So a product with even 0.1% false positive rate is way, way too high because this will affect thousands, 
tens thousands of files. And even if you have one of those files that is like critical to the infrastructure of certain companies, it can cause a lot of damage to these companies. So a single false positive will may cause outages worldwide, depending how widespread this false positive is. And depending, the clean files are usually more widespread than malware. I should add to this that everything I say here only applies to antivirus products. It does not apply to EDR or MEDR. They can tolerate a little bit more false positives than antivirus products can. And the reason is that antivirus products will clean or put into quarantine everything that they detect. There is no, oh, please look into this if it's maybe malicious or maybe a threat actor on the system, uh, where what EDRs do. So as soon as you have a detection, it's clean from the system. So everything you detect with an antivirus product, you need to be sure that you can actually put it into quarantine without causing damage. Additionally, if you have one false positive on a widespread file, you as a malware analyst might be able to tackle this with one step that is fixing the signature that caused this. But the other people that work in support might get numerous calls just because of this one false positive. There's a lot of work that has to be done by other people in that company. And you actually don't want that as a company, as a malware analyst, not even that. So, so taking all of this into account, the importance of preventing false positives as the main deciding factor, as your main focus, this it will make sense why you cannot employ one defense technique to catch all of the malware that exists. So you have instead use several techniques and use the Swiss cheese model of defense. You may have seen this before, or if not, I will show it here. This is the Swiss cheese model of defense. So every layer has some holes where the malware can evade this kind of detection technology. However, since you employ several layers, you will hopefully cover all of the holes at some point. So it is worth investing resources into developing detection technologies, which may have a low detection rate overall, but that close those holes that are still left there. So even if you detect only 10% or 5% of the malware, it might be worth adding this if this makes sure you detect malware that you could not detect before. Let's talk about heuristic detection technologies and what they mean. So the term uh, when it's used for detection technologies is not really clear in its definition. But heuristic in general means you have a problem that you cannot solve optimally, but there is a solution that will approximately give you a, a result, a non-perfect result, but one that approximately solves this problem. For antivirus defense, it is often associated with detection technologies that are able to detect new malware and not just old malware. So let's use this definition for now to talk about this. A lot of times you will find the claim that behavior signatures are heuristic. This is, the claim is used in a general sense to have a contrast to pattern signatures and Basically, most people assume pattern signatures cannot detect new malware, whereas behavior signatures always detect new malware. But this isn't true by far. So I have been writing signatures for the last 10 years, and pattern signatures can detect new malware. Depends how you use them. You can make heuristics with them. If you apply certain, let's say you want to detect ransomware and at some point most ransomware executables carry the ransom notes with them. So one thing you could do is you could add common keywords that are often mentioned in ransom notes and count how often they occur in this binary. And if 
a certain number of these keywords was met, you could assume it's a ransomware because it carries a ransom node. And this um, was a heuristic signature based on patterns. So you had some sort of threshold. It was not a perfect solution. It had some fuzziness and it's based on patterns. However, if you write behavior-based signatures, these may not be suitable to detect anything new. They may not be heuristic at all. So the main distinction between pattern and behavior-based signatures is the source where the data comes from that you use for your signature. So the behavior, for the behavior data, you actually have to execute the malware. This is a problem actually, because you usually you don't want malware to be able to execute any code before you detect it. However, this approach is used additionally to the other approaches because static approaches are not enough to have a full protection for your product. So I hope this cleared some things up for you. And if you have any remaining questions, please post in the comments below and let's see you next time. If you want to learn Mava analysis from the ground up, please check the link in the video description below. It contains a coupon link to my Udemy course for beginners.